Last week we did wide receivers. This week we're giving you running backs. We're putting these 2023 rookies into a tier list because let's be honest, the fantasy football offseason is already among us and there is no better time than the present to organize our thoughts. My name is Cameron Lawrence. This is the Fantasy Football Fellas YouTube channel, and I'm not going to waste any more of your time, so let's dive in with our S-tier running backs. And our first S-tier guy is B. John Robinson, and we're going to look at this from a dynasty perspective. If you're a best ball or redraft guy, don't worry. There will be plenty in here for you as well to take away from. But I want to get one thing straight on B. John before we get into this. B. John was pretty close to a fantasy bust because of where he was drafted, right? He was taken as the running back three, and he finished with only 14.5 fantasy PPR points per game. That is disappointing, right? If he was your sixth overall pick, fifth overall pick, if you really went all in and he was your first overall pick, you were disappointed from where you drafted, right? Similar to like a Travis Kelsey, similar to a Tony Pollard. But Bijan, from an NFL standpoint, is not a bust. Fantasy-wise, yes. You can say this year maybe he was a bust based on where he was drafted, but he still had 214 carries, 976 yards, 4.6 yards per carry, four touchdowns on the ground, and then another 58 receptions on 86 targets, 487 receiving yards, and four touchdowns. Right? You were you were probably sitting here if you drafted him that high. You're expecting rookie Saquon Barkley. And the biggest reason we didn't get rookie Saquon Barkley from B. John Robinson was he didn't get the touches that rookie Saquon Barkley did. Saquon had over 330 touches his rookie season. B. John Robinson didn't even have 220 rushing attempts. He didn't even have the same amount of rushing attempts that Tyler Algier had last year on the same team. But guys, guys, he's free. B. John's free. There is no more Arthur Smith in Atlanta. Hopefully, we don't get all this crazy stuff. It sounds like maybe Bill's going to be there. Maybe Jim Harbaugh's going to be there. Maybe even Mike Vrabel could be there. Hopefully, it's somebody that can kind of kickstart this offense because let's be honest, there is so much talent on this team. They're looking to bring in a new quarterback. And you know what? I think the path is pretty clear for B. John Robinson to continue to be or to become, I shouldn't say continue to be because he's not, to become a top five running back in the league. I think right now he's he's for sure got to be a top five dynasty running back. I don't know if there's enough guys who are talented enough to put ahead of him. Because if we see, you know, another 50 uh, rush attempts next year, close to what Travis Etienne got, where he was around 270 this year, we could see another bump in, you know, the receiving work. He only caught 58 of his 86 targets, which for a running back is pretty low. I think the path is pretty clear for B. John Robinson to be a superstar because the talent showed it on the field this year. The other player in the S tier is Jameer Gibbs. This shouldn't be a surprise. He was also drafted top 12 in the NFL draft. He was a guy I pounded the table for this year. If you if you watch our other content or podcasts or short form, you're probably sick of hearing me say that. But I was nervous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I was so nervous to start this year. Weeks 1 through 6, 9.7 fantasy points per game. Averaging 60 total yards. He missed two games in there. He was injured. But on the season, he ended with 182 attempts, 945 rushing yards, and 10 rushing touchdowns, which we definitely did not expect. 52 receptions, 71 targets, 316 receiving yards, and a touchdown to go along with that. And the big reason was week 7 through 17 after his bye. He was the running back 3, averaging 19.4 fantasy points per game, over 100 total yards, and a touchdown a game. On the season, he averaged 5.2 yards per carry, but during that stretch, he was at 5 point seven which is incredible if you watch him during this bucks game that we just saw he looked fantastic in that obviously as long as david montgomery is there that's probably going to continue to cap his upside a little bit but what we saw from gibbs this season is he can take over this backfield he can average almost 20 fantasy points per game he's worthy of a sec i mean if he falls to the second round i think he's easily worthy of that pick this next year and i think it's easy to see why these two guys are at the s tier we move down to the a tier there's only one player in it is devon a chan i think you could say you could say he's in the s tier you can make that argument the reason i have him down is just the injury that he dealt with right we didn't get to see a full season of him but i think pretty easily he could fit in that s tier he's more like a you know, it's like 1A, 1B is the way I'm using these. I think he I think he has as high of a ceiling as either of those two guys on there. We saw that. His yards per carry was insane, up over eight. He had that three-game stretch where he had 37 rush attempts, 455 yards, 
thir- 12 and a half yards per carry during this time. Eight rushing touchdowns, eight receptions, uh, 10 targets, 63 yards, and another two touchdowns. They averaged 33.3 fantasy points per game in three games. Absolutely ridiculous, right? He misses a couple weeks, comes back. Week 13 to 18, he's still a top 12 running back. 64, 64 rush attempts, 339 yards, three touchdowns during that time, another 17 receptions on 25 targets for 126 yards and a touchdown. He's He easily could be the running back one, right? We saw that, and you put him into what Raheem Mostert was this year. We just saw Raheem Mostert, 209 attempts, over 1,000 yards rushing, 18 total touchdowns, and Mostert's going to be 32 next year. So it's it seems like... Devon A. Chan is going to naturally just take over the running back one spot, but health is going to be important, right? He's a smaller running back. How does he continue to handle this? And But on the other side of it, the Dolphins are probably going to run it back. They're probably going to have the same offense, pretty much you know, going to run everything the same. So if he gets this lead back role, he could easily be the running back one overall. Like I said, this is more of a 1A, 1B tier for me for A Chan. So that's why he's down here, just because he missed a couple games. But the upside is as high as those guys. The floor is just a lot lower than I think Gibbs and B. John Robinson. All right, moving on to the B tier. We only got two running backs in the B tier. First is Ty J. Spears. And the big thing for Spears is there is no more Derrick Henry in town. Right, Titans are moving on from Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry said his goodbyes. There's also no more Mike Vrabel, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, his new head coach is the OC um, for the Bengals, who just led Mixon to a running back six season on the back of 302 total touches. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, Ty J. Spears becomes the guy. Right, we saw in since he Mixon was the guy, and Mixon wasn't exactly efficient. But they did rely on him uh, this season. Tajay had 100 carries, 453 yards, 4.53 yards per carry, two touchdowns, 52 receptions on 70 targets for 385 yards and a touchdown. Right, so we know he's good at um, he's a good receiver, which is what Mixon was as well. Right, he can be a threat out of the backfield. It just remains to be seen: Are they going to hand the keys to this backfield? Over to Spears. Are they just going to give him rain? Or are they going to bring someone in and do a timeshare, a 50-50 split? We're hoping for more of that 60-40, maybe even getting 65-35. But the good thing for Spears, the thing that makes me optimistic that they might just hand him the keys, he's, he played over 50% of snaps this year. right? He was that receiving back. He played in pass protection. Anytime there was any threat of a receiving, he came in. There was multiple games where he truly outsnapped Derrick Henry this season. And, and like I said, he was top 10 in targets. So I think there's a lot to like about Spears. I think he played pretty well. It just He just needs to make sure that we can get him over that hump to be the starting back this next year in Tennessee. But I, I think he will be. The other running back is Zach Charbonnet. And Charbonnet's tough for me, right? Because he's not going to be the lead back for at least two more years. right? Kenneth, Kenneth Walker has shown that he is unbelievably good. Um, and it was dominated by Kenneth Walker as far as yards, opportunity share went. But snap share, he did at least play a 48% snap share this season. So he was close to 50%. He ran way more routes than KW3 did. He was eighth in routes, 113 more than Kenneth Walker. So he's getting in on the receiving work. He's just not necessarily catching the passes. He's not getting targets as of yet, but that could definitely change, especially with a new OC coming in, a new head coach coming in, right? There's going to be a lot shaken up in Seattle. And Pete Carroll rarely uses rookie running backs. Kenneth Walker was the exception because of the injuries to Rashad Penny, but over the course of his um, career, you know, coaching at Seattle, he's, you know, drafted Rashad Penny first of all, didn't really use him his rookie season. So that's something that we've seen, something to keep in mind that Zach Charbonnet should be used more moving forward. The thing for Charbonnet is he's going to have to be able to dominate the goal line touches. You watch him play, he's a tough runner. He gets downhill fast. He needs to dominate the goal line touches to really bring you fantasy relevance this next season because Kenneth Walker will probably still control more of the rushing attempts. Now moving on to the C tier, our biggest tier, our only tier with three running backs in it. We're going to start with Keaton Mitchell, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I wanted to put Keaton Mitchell the tier above. Tyler and Lucas talked me out of it, and the biggest reason is he's going to be coming off an ACL injury. We just don't know 100% how athletes always come back from it, right? The technology, the surgery itself is getting better, so that rehab's getting quicker. 
but it's still going to be an ACL injury for Keaton Mitchell that he's going to be coming off of. However, during his six games where he played, averaged nine touches a game and 81 yards, 8.4 yards per carry. He was dynamic. I've been calling him the Walmart Devon A. Chan, right? We saw even the less, less time with him. He's going to be on a less explosive offense from the running back position. I think that's fair to say just because Lamar is going to take so many yards and touchdowns away from a running back. That, that's just anybody that comes into the system. But we've seen J.K. Dobbins. We've seen um, – Gus Edwards. We've even seen guys like Devonta Freeman, you know, be able to produce in this offense. So if Keaton Mitchell's able to come back, is able to be healthy, I think he really has a chance to take over as a one, running back one because of how good he did look. And if he's able to do that, he could be very dynamic in this offense. But there is just a lot of mystery, a lot of question marks around Keaton Mitchell moving forward. That's what keeps him in the C tier. The next running back in the C tier is Roshan Johnson. Roshan on the season, 81 rush attempts, 352 yards, two touchdowns, 34 receptions on 40 targets for 209 receiving yards, which we like to see, especially in a offense like the Bears where it's a running quarterback running offense, but he just never became the back. He was 37% snap share on the season. We saw Deonta Foreman take the backfield for a little bit. We saw Khalil Herbert take over the backfield for a little bit. But we never saw Roshan Johnson take a hold, even with all the injuries going on. There was just that level of disappointment for Roshan Johnson this year. I think hopefully he can be in a split backfield and maybe give you relevance if the other guy is missing time. But I just don't see a ton of upside for Roshan Johnson moving forward. And the final guy in the C tier is Kendra Miller. He just was never truly healthy this year. We don't know much about Kendra Miller. We know that maybe he'll have the opportunity to be the lead back, especially if Kamara leaves. Um, Kamara's due to be 29 this year, due to $18 million. He's going to be due a $28 million cap hit the next season. So it'd be interesting. Maybe the Saints look to cut him. I think he's probably staying around at least one more season, Kamara is. Um, but moving forward from a dynasty perspective, right, he is in line to hopefully see more touches. But right when he was getting healthy in the beginning of the season, Kamara came back. He just never really looked healthy and then was injured again, missed the rest of the season. But we do know that Kendra Miller has a lot of upside. His senior year um, at TC or, or senior year at TCU, 224 yards, 1400 or 224 attempts, excuse me, 1400 yards and 17 touchdowns. So that's you know, we know he's good. It's just how well is it going to translate to the NFL? Will he ever actually get that opportunity? Like Roshan Johnson, I think that leaves him in the seats here. And finally, our last two guys are two guys that I think are going to end up being career handcuffs, but I think could be good career handcuffs. The first guy we saw this year, Jaleel McLaughlin, 76 carries, 410 yards and a touchdown, 31 receptions on 36 um, targets, 160 yards and two touchdowns. He split with Javante Williams. You know, when Williams is in there, it was definitely more Williams' backfield. When Williams was gone, he played well. He kind of reminds me of almost like a J.D. McKissick moving forward. So a guy that maybe you can plug and play in certain situations, but you're not relying on, you know, every single game moving forward. You don't want him as your running back three. You can maybe stick him in there, get a couple of points per game, get a high bump here or there if the lead back misses time. But that's who Julian McLaughlin reminds me of. And then we got Chase Brown. 44, um, 44 rush attempts, 179 yards, no touchdowns, um, 14 targets or 14 receptions on 15 targets for 156 yards and a touchdown. You know, he never truly broke out, but I think, you know, if Mixon leaves this year, right, there was talk about cutting him last year. Um, if he, you know, leaves in two years, maybe Chase Brown's able to, you know, kind of take over this backfield. I don't know if that's really going to be who he is, but if Mixon misses time, I think Chase Brown is someone that you really want on your roster. All righty, guys, that wraps up our running back rankings. Tune in tomorrow for our good, bad, and ugly of the wide receiver, top 15 wide receivers on the podcast tomorrow. Like I said, we got shorts coming, so hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and we will see you again tomorrow.